everybody and welcome back to Nelling Roof Designs. Oh, it's another Thursday and it is another crossword puzzle collage. I am having more fun with these and if you're participating, I hope you are too. Um, and just a reminder, if you are working on the crossword collage, please use the hashtag, um, that's a mouthful, hashtag 2023CW for crossword collage. And um, if you're on Instagram, please put it on there. Um, use that hashtag so I can see what you are creating. And um, yeah, I think this is this has been a lot of fun. So I think this is week 10. I'm trying to get ahead a little bit. Like I said, August is busy and I'm trying to get a little ahead on my crosswords. So um, I'm going to set these again. Hi, Daisy. Daisy just joined me. It's not a very nice day here, and the girls are in, and I think they're a little bored. Um, I feel bad for them, but we're still having some very hot and humid weather, um, and the mosquitoes are terrible. Um, so I'm not out with them today. Now, this video is being filmed, just so you know, you can get a little, this one is being felt, filmed on July 27th. So if you're seeing this in August, um, we could be having a absolutely amazing day here. Um, but today, the weather isn't really all that hot. So these papers, I have to give a shout out uh, to Marissa over at Sweet Pea Curiosities. I purchased a kit from her, a digital kit, and it is her cowgirl kit, and I'm going to be making a junk journal come September with it. And I'd love to have you go over to Marissa's shop on, she has an Etsy shop, that's where she sells her digitals, but she's also on um, Instagram, and you can see what's coming up um, what she does. So Marissa, hi. Um, I haven't forgotten about you. I am going to be making that journal come September. So these are just one of the papers, the digital papers that she offers. And I've been using all of her digital papers um, in this book because I absolutely love them. And I think they'll be wonderful to write on or put a paper on or not a paper, <laughs> hello, put a photo on. Uh, you can see I really can't do two things at once here. So I just love these papers, and I do plan on purchasing some more from her um, because, like I said, I really, 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 really like her, her digitals. Um, they are right up my alley. And I want to let everybody know about them because they are, she does a beautiful job with all of them. So that's where these papers come from. And I am not going to use my glue stick to back this because as you know, I do have trouble having my pages curl. And I'm also having trouble with my art glitter glue. Oh dear. Here we go. This one, I bought a whole new bottle. I bought a refill, but I bought a new one of these. I've, I think I've had this for many years, at least a couple years. That's not many, is it? Um, and I really want to get everything used up out of this one before I break open the new bottle. So this is going to go on here like this, but not upside down. There. And my stuff is my glue. You can see it's kind of dribbling out of the top, but that's okay. So I want to explain this 
now I can't get it to stop dribbling out. Hold on, folks. Um, I had it upside down with the pin in it. And that's not working. I'm going to set it here. All right, so this is a special page. And I want to explain a little bit here. And then as I'm, I'll tell you the words. Then as I'm creating it, I will tell you a story, a very sad story. It went from happy to sad to really upsetting, like divorce style upsetting, to wondering, longing, wanting, back to I can't believe it. It was one of the happiest days of my life, and it's just getting better. So um, my crossword, and I like putting, as you can see, I like putting my words in first, or my phrases, and then I can work around it and build on it. So this week, it says, my best buddy, friends, love, and faith. So this is what I have pulled. I have these two gals here. And I pulled these first. I had no intentions of, I had a different, actually a different intention of using these. These can either be this way, standoffish, or that can be this way, where someone is kind of upset. This one has no idea what's going on, what's happened. Like, how did we get here? And then I have this postcard that I found in my drawer. And it's not really a postcard. I think this is the backing of 46 pieces. And this came in uh, my creative studio. This is of Napoli. Uh, Ferrovia. I'm taking, this is Italy, okay? That looks like maybe Caesar. Augusta, yeah, Italian Augustus Caesar. Uh, I have a postcard here, okay. And then again, th these are part of my grabby papers, and I'm going to be cutting around these, and I'm going to be telling you a little story. So back in, I was married in 1984. And for our seventh wedding anniversary, I surprised my husband with a trip to Negril, Jamaica. And I wanted to try an all-inclusive resort because we didn't have a lot of money at the time. And I figured an all-inclusive was a way to go. And it was. So... We went to Negril, Negril, Jamaica, and now again, this was in 1984, and um, it was for our seventh year wedding anniversary, all right? And we must have gone in the spring, probably when, you know, back then we could take more time. He closed the quarries didn't open again until March, yada, yada, yada. So we had time, you know, we had a little time, you know, a lot of time to do, you know, some travel. So while we were at our Sandals Resort, you know, they have playmakers there and you have all kinds of activities and they had a great pool. They still do have a great pool. Um, it was a swim up bar. Well, we were sitting there one day and we were enjoying our time by the pool and we saw another couple there. They were young. So in 84, what was I, 25? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Do you like these conversations I have with myself? How old was I in 84? Yeah, I was 20, I was 20 something. I had to be, oh yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So in 84, right, we were married in 84, but we went to Negril 
in 1991. We had moved into our house. So I was 32. I think I was about 32. Say early 30s. And I don't know how old I was. Regardless. We were there. And we met a couple. We met another couple there. And we really hit it off great. I mean, like her and I were long lost sisters. I had never had a sister. She, uh, she has a sister. But I don't think her sister and her were as close as we became. So we really, really, really hit it off. I mean, it was crazy how well we got along. And she's nine years younger than me. So she's probably, oh gosh, I don't know. She was in her early to mid-20s. And I was in my early late 20s, early 30s, okay? And her husband was the same age as her. So, and, and Jimmy, Jimmy's her husband, he hit it off with my, my husband unbelievably. So we hung out the entire time. We had met other people there. Um, and we hung out with them as well. But we became inseparable. So we found out that they lived about three hours away from us in New York State. So, you know, you know how you say to people, oh, you know, we get home, we got to get together. Yeah, well, that doesn't always happen. Well, in this case, it did. And that later that summer... We, we stayed in touch. We couldn't not stop talking to one another, my girlfriend and I. So later that summer, I'm going to see if I have a smaller one of these. I should. Um, we invited him to our house. And they brought, we had a ball. I mean, we had a ball. Then they invited us to their house. So for 14, well, it was longer than 14 years. Well, no, it was 14 years. So for 14 years, we were best friends. I mean, like we were, we couldn't be separated. Um, we talked, her and I talked every single, every day. I mean, every day. They owned a business. They worked for their dad, and then they ended up buying his dad out. And it was to the point where, you know, back when The Bachelor first came on, I was addicted to it. I would call her, she would call me, and we would watch the show together over the telephone. Um, almost every weekend, we got together and saw each other. We would either go there or they would come here. Um, we started going to Maine together, taking vacations together. Never missed um, a holiday. It just went on and on. It was crazy. I mean, crazy how well we got along. So I, I got pregnant with my twins. And right after, oh gosh, probably when the boys were three, three or four, my girlfriend, she wanted, they were trying to have children and she couldn't. And she ended up having uterine cancer. And I went out to be with her. She had to have surgery. So I went out, I think I was out there for a week, 10 days to help her and to help Jimmy. And uh, she was able after that, you know, the doctor said, well, you know, we're not sure if you can have children. So when my boys were probably, let's see, they had to be maybe seven or eight, they adopted a baby from the Republic of Georgia. 
and we were so happy. And I can remember that we were on vacation down in the Carolinas, and they were on their way to Georgia. Now, this is the Republic of Georgia over by Russia. And I don't know if it was a part of Russia at that time or not. I don't know. So they adopted a little baby girl, brought her home. And all of a sudden, you know, the it was all about the baby. And, you know, I understand. And my boys were, now my boys are in third grade. And because they changed from private school to public school, I couldn't pull them out of school as much as I had in the past. Um, public school does not like you to do that. So there was some things that we missed uh, that were being celebrated three hours away from us. And it was, I think it was hard on both of us. And um, my girlfriend, you know, she, of course she wanted a baby. Her, you know, she wanted a, to have a baby as well. And, you know, I was rooting for her and, you know, we were just going on and on and on about a bunch of stuff. And um, one day I called her. She was going to have, she was going to have a party. I think it was her daughter's first year birthday party. And I highly recommended to my girlfriend, because it was going to be a big party, and I highly recommended to her that we come out either the week after. There was something going on with the boys. I don't think I could, I don't know what was going on, but I just, I wasn't going to be able to get there. Or I think my au pair was here from Australia. She came out to visit. And I recommended, I suggested to my girlfriend that we come either the week before or the, or the week after. Because I said, you know, baby is um, a year old. And it's going to be very, very busy. And maybe it would be best if we came out at a later date. Well. I think that was the wrong thing to say. And my girlfriend, she went up one side of me and down the other. And I was flabbergasted. And this went on for probably 10 minutes. I couldn't get a word in edgewise. I didn't, I was dumbfounded. My husband could hear her yelling at me. I did not, you know, we had a home phone. I didn't have it on speakerphone or anything like that. And he's looking at me like, what the heck is going on? Well, it was a breaking point for my girlfriend. And I said to her, I said, you know, I called her by her name. And I said, you know what? I said, nobody talks to me like that. I said, my parents have never spoken to me the way you have. My husband doesn't speak to me like this. And I'm not going to allow you to speak to me like this. I said, I, I just, I don't know what's happening. And she started and again, I hung up on her. And I was shaking and I was, I was so upset. So my husband called her husband and he's like you know Jimmy what what just happened he goes I don't know he says but nobody hangs up on my wife and he said I think that was a big mistake and you know they didn't say anything you know my husband was like well I don't know what's going on however I think your wife was out of line. Well, we didn't, we didn't speak 
my girlfriend and I. Then I got word that she was pregnant. She was finally pregnant. And I wanted to go out to see her. We both thought it would be a good idea to go out and see her. And when we got there, it didn't go as planned. Um, I think we were both stubborn. Uh, of course, my husband and Jim took off on their boat. <laughs> They're like, okay, we're out of here. <laughs> they took off on their boat and went for a nice boat ride. Took my boys with them. Uh, then when they came back, you know, there was no, you know, she was always a very good hostess, but there was no mention of, you know, would you like to have lunch? So on and so forth. And I said, you know what? I'm just not welcomed here. This isn't going to work. So, and I remember it was a hot, 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 hot day and never offered. The boys were out side we ended up on their patio with no covering it was a new home so they didn't have a lot of you know outside umbrellas and things like that well when we left i ended up in tears she never invited me to see the nursery for her you know baby to be coming and I didn't ask to see it. I didn't want to intrude. And it was just a disaster. I cried the whole way home. I mean, for three hours, I was just crying. I was so upset. Then I found out she was crying after I left. Well, we just, I just, I didn't feel comfortable calling. So let's fast forward eight years later um, which would be two months ago I'm sitting here and I am scrapbooking family photos and I'm back in the year 2000 and every photo that I am doing is of my girlfriend and her husband, we are at her parents' lake house. We are in Maine. She's at the house reading books to the boys. We are here. We are there. We are everywhere. And I said, you know what? I said, this is ridiculous. Enough is enough. So I didn't have their numbers. They no longer had a home number because they just have their cell numbers. I didn't want to call their business because it was a Saturday. I wanted to um, get a hold of them personally. I finally found Jimmy's cell phone number. Linda's not a social media girl. She hates it. God bless her. She's not on any social media, so I couldn't find her that way. And I found, I found her husband's number after about five attempts of calling. <laughs> and they were on their way to the casino. They were bringing her dad. Her mom and dad loved to go to casinos. So they were taking him to Turning Stone, which is in New York State. And they were all in the car. And I just said, okay. I said, I'm sitting here scrapbooking family photos, and you guys are in all of them. I said, enough is enough. This has gone on too long. I said, I miss my buddy. This is just absolutely ridiculous. Too much time has passed, and it's got to stop. So we chatted just briefly because they were driving, and I heard my girlfriend 
in the background ask if we were going to be home later and if we could FaceTime with them. And I said, absolutely. So they FaceTimed us and it was like, we didn't skip a beat. It was like no time had passed. And it was just amazing. It was the most amazing feeling. Um, and time. And we are back together. Um, we've already been out to their house. And my boys are like, oh my gosh, mom, it's unbelievable that, you know, Aunt Linda and Uncle Jimmy or you guys are back together again. And on and on and on. And um, I'm so grateful through love and faith. Um, but the sad thing is, I, you know, we missed, she has a son that just turned 18. We missed him growing up. You know, they missed our boys, you know, after the third grade or whatever, growing up. But we have so much to catch up on. And like I said, it's like we didn't, we did not miss a beat. We picked up, my husband was just amazed. Um, and he's like, how many other people could do that? Um, and, you know, she had said to me, she often wondered, you know, what she thought about my mom a lot. Because, you know, my mom, she knew my girlfriend very well. And my mom was heartbroken. It took me years to get over my girlfriend. It was like, it was like going through a divorce um, or losing a loved one. And I so wish my mom was here to see that we were, you know, we're back together and best buds again. Um, but it's funny. Uh, my girlfriend said to me that she said, you know, over the years, you know, I've constantly thought of you. And she said, you know, my daughter, you know, I, I just don't want to say her daughter's name, just a little bit of privacy here, but she says my daughter would come home from school and she would be so upset with some of her girlfriends, you know, or her. And she'd say, I'm going to tell her off, Mom. I'm going to just tell her like it is. And, um, you know, her daughter is now 20 years old. That's how, you know, I, last time I saw her, she was a year old. Um, she just turned 20. And she said, honey, I'm going to tell you something. She says, don't do it. She says, I don't care how upset you are. She says, you stay quiet. And she said, I would remind her of what I did to you um, and how I went off on you over something so stupid and how it ruined our friendship and how much we missed. And she goes, I used to remind her of that often. So that, that really kind of hit home. That, that made me, that made me feel good that, um, you know, she passed on that advice, you know, to her daughter and she did think of me. So, you know, if there's anybody out there watching this, you know, it's never too late, uh, you know, to, you know, extend the olive branch or just get the courage. I, you know, I had to get the courage. I didn't know how I was going to be received. Um... And I, I just had to get the courage to reach out uh, to her because it was very important 
to me to reconnect um, because you know that's the one really good thing about scrapbooking you know photos is that you see whether it's family or friends and I know it's so hard with the political arena and what has happened over the years so many families have been split up because of that and it's so sad nothing especially politics nothing should get in the way of family or friends and sometimes you just have to you just have to bite the bullet and uh Um, you just have to extend that olive, olive branch. And I'm so glad that I did because, you know, I really, really, really missed my girlfriend. So all we can do is move forward. I can't, you know, sometimes I'll say to her, I just, we missed so much. Um, we're both trying to be realistic and about, you know, the time that we, we did miss. But, you know, I said to her, you know, there's a lot of times she didn't understand when I had the boys that just couldn't take off. I just couldn't, you know, there was either some event going on or uh, whatever. And it was hard for her to understand that I just couldn't drop everything anymore. And I always said, I can't tap dance to your ballet. I just can't do it. Um, and I, you know, I think now, like she said, she goes, I've, she goes, I've matured. I've, I've grown up and with the kids, she goes, I, I realize it. And, you know, even like the past couple of days, she's been trying, I'll call you, I'll call you. Oh, well, we'll get to, I'll call. But it's hard. Um, you know, Her both her, her son's getting ready to go off to college. Her daughter's home. Uh, oops, this is really good. Her daughter is home. Uh, she's, this is she's going into her third year of college. And um, she's busy, you know. She's, and she gets it. And, and I get it. Um. So she can't always, you know, be there to pick up my phone call or whatever. And I don't expect her to be there at the drop of a hat. So, so just reach out to, you know, the people that maybe you had an somebody went off on you or there was just it it doesn't hurt you know I just think you know people are they're afraid of being rejected um, always but I just wanted to make sure that all right so I think this here I'm going to, I'm going to get a little bit of this down before I do anything else here. Let's see. I just got to figure out how, where I'm going to. Put that there. That will go underneath. So that is my tale for today. It's a pretty personal story, but I want I just thought it was very important like I said for anybody out there that might be struggling or has been hurt by someone that you really truly love and you don't understand 
what happened. There is hope. If there's love and, and faith and hope, <laughs> things usually work out for the best. I think. Try to frame this around here like this. Let's see. And then I think that one here will go right. There, I think that will work there, right? Let's try that. And I wanted to kind of get her in like this, in and down. I know, Daisy. Hi, sweetheart. I'll be with you shortly. And the funny thing is, oh my gosh, when Linda, when they FaceTimed us, um, they have two doodles. They have two doodles. We have the doodles. So it's just very ironic how everything has worked out. All right, I'm going to put that a little bit over here like that, over her leg. Just kind of want to get this set so... And then once I once I flip this over and get this down, then I think I can I'll be good to go to get the rest of it down. I know, sweetheart. This will go. I'm going to put this right here on the end. Move that over a little bit more. I do like these papers from Grabby. I just think they're so pretty. And I really like cutting them up and using them like this. And I'll tell the reason why I use the, um, you can't see much of it now, but I got the Napoli. Um, when my girlfriend and her husband, they, they did a cruise and when they went to Italy, she brought me back a beautiful, um, beautiful handmade, hand painted, um, like a salad bowl. And I've used that almost every single day. I either put the pot or pasta in a salad. Um, and it's just been a constant reminder of my girlfriend so we're going to try to go to Italy this spring. Her daughter is going to be doing her spring semester in Florence. And we, th I know they're going, and they thought they'd get a group together or just have us go. So um, that would be really fun. And we're going to put a little butterfly here because, you know, I don't like my straight edges. I need a little something to break it up. We'll put that butterfly there. And I did find the butterfly from my other one. And maybe I could put that right down here. Because I do like that. Can never can have too many butterflies, right? Okay. We're gonna put that right there. There. So that is this week's My Best Buddy, Friends, Love, and Faith. So, well, I hope that you enjoyed. Oh, sorry, baby doll. As I roll over little Daisy. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, I'm cut this, this video. 
and my little tail. I think it's a wonderful story. And I think there's more stories out there that could be made like mine. So there we go. All right, everybody. So let me go through my spiel one more time. So if you like this video, I'd love to have you give me a thumbs up. I thank you for sitting here um, and letting me lay on the couch and tell you a little story today. And um, yeah, I just think this and check out Grabby. And again, if you go to Grabby and you are a first time buyer, um, there is a coupon code. You can put in uh, Barbie and you will receive 15% off on your first purchase. Um, this, these papers that I'm working with is from the, their scrapbooking monthly kit. And I think this was for June, but go check them out. Um, I think you'll find a lot of items there in their, um, in their ephemera that you may like. So thank you, everybody. I want everybody to have a great day. Continue loving and keep that faith in your heart. And good things will always come your way. Okay, everybody, have a great day. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.